Dude, it yeah, was like, it was fucking oh, yeah, terrifying the first time I did uh, a panel. Uh, just because, like, it was so okay, surreal having, like, a room of physical people okay, thinking that I'm it's cool. It's like chat, but in real life. I was, I was yeah. scared. <laughs> I could never imagine doing that, TBH. Although I honestly, will... Honestly, I'm not even joking if you're like, oh, it's just chat in real life. It, it I, acts, mentally, it's like, a, it, it makes a difference. I will it's say, kind of crazy. I was, uh, one of my favorite interactions, <laughs> uh, was when I was a guest at Yomacon, I, uh, I basically had, like, a signing at some point, so, like, you know, people could just, like, come up, get autographs, or even just, like, ask a question or something. Pictures and stuff, um, yeah. But yeah, at one point, uh, this, like, one girl, like, showed up, and, uh, she was clearly, like, shy and everything, and her friends were just like, yeah, she's actually a huge fan of your work and everything, and I was just like, oh, Aww. thank you, uh, I was like, did, did you want, like, a picture or something? And it was cute, like, seeing her eyes, like, light up, and, like, she just started, like, nodding frantically, and Aww. I just thought that was adorable. That's really nice. Yeah. I could never see myself in that position. I, I like when my even my own chat when they think of me, they they just think of like insanity. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of them think I'm really that cool. Yeah, it's it's weird because like that's the thing is I just bumble around and scream and be bad at video games and then Real. like having people show up and like laugh at it. Like it's so weird hearing laughter IRL now because like. All the time now, I make my amazing jokes that are always funny and they always land, uh, and yeah. then all I get are my, like, you know, like, emotes in chat. Like, <laughs> that's laughter to me now. And then, like, actually hearing, yeah, like, an audience laughter, it's so weird. I lost my joke paper. I'm not funny to stream chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have my jokes with me. I think I'd feel really awkward meeting one of my fans. Well, I'm <laughs> sure it's very different with your line of work. Dude, one time someone asked me out at college and they also followed my account. <laughs> oh, that's. You gotta run. You gotta run. <laughs> oh, I did. Ahead. Oh my god, there's so much in that story that that wasn't just that. Wait, no, like, I want... <laughs> someone went, dude, I jerked it so much to you. <laughs> <laughs> Now no, that's the, the pickup line. <laughs> there you go. The person, the person who had a crush on me didn't <laughs> like, didn't know it was me as Opal. And like, I remember because I checked his Twitter because like, I was like, okay, same username on everything. So I was like, okay, I could just go from there from his profile. And so I checked and then I see follows you and I'm like, no, no. Oh, no. oh boy. Uh, so much happened there. I turned him down. He was like, I don't, um, oh, I need to think about this. And then a few hours later, he was like, I don't, I don't think I understand myself at all. Can you help me? I'm like, no, <laughs> you need a therapist. And then I help unfriended me. him. I need then, love. I need affection. And I had, me. And I had a lot he of messaged oh. me on my university email oh telling me that I'll, that he'll do anything for me in return. Uh, I never responded. Ugh. Uh, do you want to know the, do you wanna the icing on, on the cake yet. there? Do you want to know the it. icing on the cake? Yeah. Um, I met him because my my mom is co-workers with his mom. <laughs> That's how we met. So I had to awkwardly go up to my mom like like a child being like, uh, he, he, <laughs> he punched he, he me. Jerked it. <laughs> To me. Um, so I had to go to my mom and be like, hey, um, that that friend that that I have that you helped introduce me to because you're friends with his mom. Um, could you like tell her that he messaged me <laughs> that no. he messaged me on my university oh, email? No. And it was kind of really weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and yeah, it was really awkward because I'm like I'm like in my 20s doing this shit and I'm like mom I can't do this myself I can't message him back like I can't I'm not gonna I'm not gonna feed the fire there you know it's really funny because I know my brother is right. watching this because I was like hey because he loves he loves your stuff Scott so oh. I, I so like every time we stream together I send it over to him and he watches <laughs> and he was like the one who saw this happening live like hey I was there. like screenshotting everything and be like what the fuck do I reply with <laughs> <laughs> and he was like the motherfucker emailed you <laughs> Whoa! 
still doesn't and he still doesn't know it's me. He still doesn't know it's Opalu VA. He just thought I was some some person. Uh, what if this guy's listening die. right now? Well, good for him. Well, good. He's still, no, he's still know a that fan. you're creepy. I, mean, I don't think I've ever encountered like a, a yeah, guy don't. like that before. Thank God. But it's like, just so it's so crazy that he never figured out it was me. Or maybe he did. And he just never told me. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> You're better off not though, yeah. Hyper it was a total like, question. Here's what I was thinking. I was like, what if I was just some random girl and I checked his I checked his like profile, like when he asked me out, right? And I saw him follow like a bunch of porn artists and not say fork VAs. Like what the fuck oh. do I do there? <laughs> like like <clears throat> I'm, I'm in one spot because I'm Apollo VA, but if I wasn't, what the fuck would I even do then? I'd be like, oh, this guy is, um... Yeah, he sure likes the not safe for work. I mean, good for him, but also, like, put that on, like, put that on, like, a different account, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Man, I, I was he honestly... He likes to jerk it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jeez. yes. I was honestly surprised at, like... Even even the kind of crap that I got uh, when I was using my not safe for work, I had a bunch of people ask me out, and I I saw way too many dicks. Mm -hmm. I don't even like I don't like looking at my own dick. I fucking come out of the shower, I look down, and I go, Duh. "You got but, all the bisexuals after you." Yeah, and it was always unprompted too. It's I think so my weird. favorite it's though like was like there was one that had Roll Casket as like their profile picture. And I I loved Roll Casket, you know, because like when I was younger, Mega Man Legends was one of my favorite games. And their their opener was, you like Roll Casket? How do you like this? And then they just sent their dick. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and I was just like, Matt, That's I don't awful. really like it. Oh my God. <laughs> It's like how do you how do you get from point A to point B? Is it just because you had the role like profile picture? <laughs> Is this what I gotta deal with if I become a content creator? Well, it's mostly if you're if I guess you have a not safe for work alt and you have popularity. Cause I know any like popular not safe for work artist, creator, whatever, they all gotta deal with creeps. Oh yeah. It's so strange because like before I became a VTuber, I did get a lot of like creepy DMs like that and like unsolicited dick pics. Policy. They're all underwhelming. It's but just a fancy now place that to I'm fight. A VTuber, I, don't, I can't remember the last time I've gotten like a creepy DM like that. It, it's weird. I guess it's because I'm intimidating. Do you That's have a good thing, your DMs open? I do have them open. Oh, then yeah, I don't know. I don't want another truth. Yeah, I haven't. Not saying I, want I haven't them. had my like, DMs open no, in forever. No, that's not an invitation, but like. Curious. Why do people think unsolicited not safe for work images are acceptable? I've always wondered that. I was like, who who has actually sent, like, sent like an unsolicited nude and then had someone be like, wow, I I want to date them. When has that <laughs> when has that ever worked? I remember there was this one guy who had like in his bio like, yes, I support women's rights, hashtag feminism, and then he sent me a <laughs> dick pic. <laughs> it's your right to look at like, his I'm dick. Like, I'm learning a lot of things and I don't know what to believe. I mean, I feel like that's just the wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing. <laughs> oh, definitely. If They're I say I like that women, think... that means they'll like me, right? The thing Literally, they do for there are pussy. people who think that people with not safe word accounts are just horny and pervy all the time. Yeah. That, that yeah. is exactly why I, I stopped using my not safe for work. It's because everyone thought I was just constantly w. horny. And after all the shit that happened on Twitter, like last year, it just killed my libido. And I honestly just felt gross being on that all and having people just be like, yeah, this guy. Not to mention, too, that like after that harassment, too, there were a bunch of people just like stalking that alt, like, trying to look for yeah. ammo. Like, even though I, I I, think it's pretty safe to say that my Not Safe For Work account was probably one of the most Not Safe For Work, Not Safe For Work accounts there were. Because I very rarely w was actually posting, you know, like, anything Not Safe For Work. A lot of the time, I was just drunk and talking about video games. <laughs> My hey, Malvinita, <laughs> welcome to the cast. Jack can't even enjoy the show, nerd. 
I always thought it was funny because like a lot of people did do like not safe for work uh like fan art for me like mostly of like CC obviously uh but every now and then it would like have my avatar and I always thought it was funny because a lot of people thought that like whenever I retweeted it or something I was just like yes oh this is so hot but uh my my friend Jaden who you know like we're we're obviously close and a lot of times I would just be like oh look someone made me fan art uh and my Paralyzed. response was always just like yeah that's cool and then I would just continue on with my day it's weird that people think that like sex is just everything to everyone yeah I think that's the thing as a not safe for a creator. That's immediately why, like, I've heard from a few people. They're like, man, you like, how did you do it where you just branched out into safe work stuff? I'm like, cause I don't really put up the act of being horny all the time. Mm -hmm. Like if I did that, I would just hate being Opalu. I want to be me, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be horny all the Hello. time. Horny Hyper jokes are funny. Nice. I like making nice those. Nice to have a troublemaker. I, don't, I, don't to be horny. The I just, I just want, want to be happy. happy. That's, that's it. That that's is my lifestyle like now. That's- that's how it is! Just be fucking normal. Holy shit, dude. Um, where was I? It's not fruitful. It's not a. It's not a fruitful endeavor, or it's not a. It's not a good connection at all. If you're if you're trying to win someone over, you're not gonna win someone over. I turned him down. He was like, I don't. Um. Oh, I need to think about this. And then a few hours later, he was like, I don't I don't think I understand myself at all. Can you help me? I'm like, no. <laughs> you need a therapist. And then help I me. unfriended I him. I need then... love. I need affection. And I then he messaged oh. me on my university email oh telling my God. me that, I'll, that he'll do anything for me in return. Uh, I never responded. Hollywood constantly tells you that you can win someone over and all of those stories make a lot of money because they're just that. They're stories, okay? So you need to stop with that bullshit. Um, now this doesn't mean that, uh, like that dynamic might not change. Cause I know at this point, a lot of people will get in the chat and say, well, that's not true. I met my girlfriend because I convinced her to have sex with me. My dick was massive and she fell in love with me as soon as she saw it or whatever the fuck. It, that stuff is really stupid. Like, and if it happened to a person, if it happened to one person, that doesn't mean that it's going to happen to every single person. Uh, it, it's not if you're cause in that, the reason why I was mentioning that. The reason why I was mentioning that is because some people will say, I don't want to date. I just want to fuck. Okay. Especially a lot of incels would say shit like that. Um, it doesn't, they're not going to fuck you either, dude. <laughs> like it's very, very, very unlikely. Normie shit is very important. Everyone like talk about fucking bird box or whatever. You don't even have to fucking talk about the actual movie. Just be like, what's up with bird box? Why are there so many memes about Bird Box? Like, I don't fucking understand it, dude. What's up with Sandra Bullock? Just doesn't matter. Boom, it's over. Talk to the other person. They're gonna, they're gonna come up with something. They're gonna, they're, they're also uh, confused and they're also trying to impress you in some way because they've already admitted to going on a date with you. So like, obviously it's a mutual situation. Don't show them your memes. No matter what, do not show them your fucking memes. Hide the memes every single time, please, for the love of Christ. And like, I remember, cause I checked his Twitter, cause like, I was like, okay, same username on everything. So I was like, okay, I could just go from there from his profile. And so I checked and then I see follows you and I'm like, no! Never show the memes. Terrible decision. Terrible decision. So you're saying be fake. What the fuck? I thought you had self-worth. Oh my god, dude No, everyone is fucking fake in the beginning. Everyone tries to hide the like the really significant baggage That's what both parties are doing. You're putting on your best self You don't go in to a fucking first date looking like dog shit when you probably look like dog shit 98% of the time Okay, there's a reason for that. Is that being fake? No, that's not being fake. You're being presentable You're putting on your best face This is what both parties do and it is something that you should be doing as well if 
if you're not doing. Um, uh, the whole point is that, like, uh, the, you do the normie shit, it's the entry point until the other person is comfortable around you, and then you can actually get the more specific things that you like, or more specific things that they might like, and your opinions on them. That's the point when the other person is comfortable around you, that's where you can show the memes. But usually, don't show the memes, for the most part. I don't think anyone would like that. What do you oh, need advice good. for? I am, uh, I am 28 years old, dude. Uh, I am Same. very shy as, mm. uh, uh, it's, uh, I am cripplingly shy, I would say, almost like, uh, very, in a, in a sense. But, uh, I have been diagnosed recently with ADHD and, uh, uh some, uh, you know, uh, we in Finland have the Asperger's, uh, uh, diagnosis still in use, so I have that, that one. But, uh, I need your advice on how do I get over the abject terror of rejection I have. I am, I have never been on a date, I have never asked anyone out, I have never done anything like that. I am, can just, uh, I am, I feel like an alien in the, in, you know, romantic life in that way i i feel like i need a play by play or like a like a i need some i need like an earpiece or something when i go out and uh, you know socialize uh, i work fine in small talk and uh, all that shit but uh, everything else is terrifying to me so i know like when you're autistic there's different types of therapy you can do to overcome these kinds of things have you ever looked at anything like that well i have been in different uh, types of therapy for uh, over 10 years going on 12 years in, in lately this year so i've uh, done you know i i usually went to uh, for many years i went to uh, a nurse a psychiatric nurse who uh, who we kind of talked about these things and i i've been on action therapy uh, like a uh, cognitive, well, not cognitive, but, you know, action-based therapy, you know, like, uh, something that, uh, where practical therapy for has a it, little has while. It, has it helped you at all, this kind of, uh... Mm, not yet in these things. It has helped in other ways, but, uh, I feel like this is something that is hard to, you know, breach, because even though you can sort of rehearse it and all that it's never the same thing and every all the advice is mostly mostly you know about the confidence and self-esteem and uh, i don't know it's uh, it feels very very you know uh, non-physical non-practical in that sense like uh, you gotta be confident you gotta do these things and I know sure Hassan it's very vague wants, what does that mean yeah like uh, i need i need like you know uh, step one, step two, step three, you know, okay. something like that. So, so there's a couple um, different things. It, it, do you want me to, can I step in here real quick? Yeah, please. Okay. So there's a couple different things. One, you talked about ADHD, uh, which obviously I'm sure you're, uh, I mean, you can get medication for. And also on top of that, like, I'm sure the people that you're talking to are probably suggesting like having a structured regimented life, which is very helpful for someone like myself, at least like the way I deal with my ADHD is is certainly creating structures and healthy habits but other than that as far as like overcoming social anxiety obviously i can't speak for autism uh, and how much of a role that factors in i'm sure it it, it does a lot but one thing that i uh, did to overcome social anxiety when i was uh younger and i still go through this every now and then was uh, i i exercise it like a muscle and what i mean by that is that uh, your fear of rejection is not something you can get over unless you just get rejected a lot and that's the unfortunate reality um and ultimately you will get better in that process of uh, being able to talk to strangers over and over again and getting rejected in a lot of those circumstances where it absolutely will help you realize that it's not that big of a deal it's not that big of a problem and that more people are stuck in their own heads and have the exact same kinds of anxieties and fears that you're experiencing and they're too busy with those kinds of fears in a social setting to recognize the things that you're doing that are weird you know what i mean because that's one of the things that people are afraid of it's like oh man am i Am I sweating too much? Am I being really weird right now? Are they noticing that I'm being weird right now? And in most circumstances, they don't. 
I'll, I'll go so far as to say that I was, I used to have such like, I, I don't even know if this is called social anxiety, but like I was so anxious that I couldn't wear glasses. I was so anxious that I couldn't wear a hat when I was younger, where I, uh, where I unironically thought like people are going to look at me and go, why the fuck's that dude wearing glasses outside? Like that's, that's the degree that I like overthought these sorts of things. The only way that I was able to get over it was by talking to people all the fucking time, no matter what, even if it hurt, even if it made me, even if I was fearful. And that is unfortunately the, in my opinion, the best way to get over that and, and seeing it almost like a, seeing it almost like a muscle that you have to train. Um, have you tried watching any red pill to pick up artists? <laughs> uh, I was uh, kind of, I kind of was in that hole for a long time, uh, like a uh, half a decade ago. But thank God I got out. Don't of listen to that, bro. Radicalized, you know. So, dude, and, you uh, saved his life, Hassan. I mean, there's a lot of when people like this go, on the internet. Fall down that red pill. Yeah, it's uh, then, I, then there's I, no I, hope. The truth is, what do you think's more the problem? Is it the like not knowing what to say in a social conversation? Like, let's say you're on a date. You're sitting across from a lady. I'm assuming yeah, yeah. you're you're heterosexual. You're going too far already. I don't know how to get on one. That's the that's okay. But to... like theoretically, let's just say yeah. we we've got the date. We're sitting across from you. Are you afraid that you don't know how to engage in the conversation? I mean, or you have conversations in in the world, right? Yeah, I I have. I have. I'm not. You know, I don't think I am. Kind of. You know, uh, the the problem is I am sort of. I can work with people. I can, uh, I can kind of put on, uh, you know, masking. You know, I can be like a, present myself as a normal person. But all my, everything I usually have social life is very. I have long-term acquaintances. I don't have friends, in that right. sense. I have a few friends. God bless them. They are awesome and uh, who have been with me since high school or earlier. But. After high school, I kind of haven't really. I am not able to, you know, keep up with people. It's uh, probably fear of rejection and also a little bit of the ADHD. I'm a bit too comfortable in being, uh, spending time by myself. So it's hard for me to, you know, call someone and go like, "Hey, wanna hang out?" So why did you have a lot of friends, in, or why why do you still have long-term relationships that you cultivated in high school? Though it's repetition, right? Like you were around them. You were forced to be in a situation where you're around them and obviously that shows that your personality is not the problem or you're not the problem in that situation you just haven't been in a situation where you're around a lot of uh, a lot of people where you can you know slowly but surely cultivate relationships right it's a uh, probably you're 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 right it's just very hard to you know get past that uh barrier of low self-esteem and uh and well, it's a vicious cycle, right? You kind of just, the more you treat, the worse your self-esteem becomes. <clears throat> indeed, indeed. And it's kind of like a, uh, like a, if I go to a bar and my friend is egging me on to go talk to someone, I'm kind of like, I get very paralyzed because I don't know, it's very weird. It's weird thinking that someone would want, uh, want something from me. It's kind of, you gotta, you gotta convince yourself. It feels like delusion. In that I'll sense. be honest. Even me, to this day, I still struggle to pick people up in person. Most of my interactions through my life have been through online dating apps, to be honest. <laughs> and like conversations that started on Tinder or something like that to break the ice and like, because you almost in person you kind of you know you make your you're so vulnerable because you really don't know what's going on, on the other side. But online in messaging and whatnot. You're able to kind of figure out if it's mutual with tinder it's so easy because they swipe right on you and it's you know you know it's you're mutual. also gay you're, you're, you're playing on easy mode you're a good looking hey 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 excuse me <laughs> i mean it's it true is though not you're, you're... easy all right look really we, look it's, it's online look. dating apps as a gay man is not easy is that what you're about to say you're about to it, lie it's not for everybody. Everybody. Also, okay, Hassan, I didn't everybody. say I was gay. I wasn't. I, I didn't say I wasn't gay, but uh, I am not gay. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you for clar thank you for clarifying. Well, yeah, okay. I think the Austin. It's good information yes. to know because then you know, Hassan is right though. Generally speaking, I think being a gay man in particular 
you I always say I could have a blowjob faster than an Uber Eats order. Like I'm not even shitting you. I could <laughs> you, know, you could go on the app, you know, set your you can set your settings to what your type is. Now now he's just, flexing. Boom, populated. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that that's kind of interesting thing about that is that uh you know, I don't know. I I've never been very in uh, as a as a cishet male. I have never been very comfortable expressing any desire or interest in people in that sense because it's also it's the fear of rejection and also the fear of making someone uncomfortable in that sense and it's kind of uh, the those rules are no, uh, rules but those kinds of you know uh, social cues are very they are very vague and it it's very terrifying in that sense and uh, it's kind of of course it comes from training you know repeating exercising that that muscle but I, i'm kind of because i'm starting so late or if i start now it would be so late that i'm no, afraid no. it'll all be kinda... yeah there's no, it's no such thing it's never there's no such thing as too late and and so what i want to go back to is like moments in your life where you were already uh cultivating successful relationships even if you were in a really complicated social situation social setting like high school so you clearly were able to successfully develop relationships with people around you in a situation like high school where many people haven't like you know what i mean you so you already overcame that you already succeeded in that uh, situation going to a bar in a large group setting like that is not for everybody that's i, I would go so far as to say that it is advanced level uh shit so don't worry about that at all work to your strengths and i think that uh austin is correct dating apps could be really helpful in uh creating a one-on-one -on -one, uh well, setting with someone that you're interested in are you on dating apps yeah yeah i i use tinder but uh it's very very much i'm very slow on my moves so i i call like 10 messages and then i either lose interest or don't have anything to say or to paralyze to ask anyone out in that sense. wait you get uh, so you get matches on tinder no it's a uh, i get some 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 matches but i'm also it takes me a lot of effort to just say hi dude you get sense. action on tinder you're in the door yeah how would exactly. you rate yourself on the hardest thing moment? yeah i mean for guys um, to get the match that's that's the hard part yeah what how do you rate yourself on physical attract on like uh physical attractiveness one to ten I am smack dab average, like a like a uh, average is all you need, bro. Oh yeah, yeah baby. Yeah, if, if it's like Look one one to ten, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's like one to ten. One. Who's better one looking, 10, me or I'm, you? I'm a five. Who's better looking, me or you? I, you know, I can't answer that. Fair, in a fair way, no. I. It's, it's okay, kinda, bro. You already did so, when you said that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like. Dude, yeah. you uh, got it. You're getting matches. And you know, yeah. chat chat chatting in the on the Tinder is a great way to start. I mean It's how I started. You're not face to face, it's low, it's kind of low stress compared to in person. I would definitely start there, man. Just chat them up, yeah. dude. Yeah, chat them up. Yeah, and you know what, man? This is what I think. When you're on Tinder and you're like, God, I'm so nervous. I can't, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I don't I wanna ask him out, but I don't know. Just fucking do it. What are they gonna say? no then who cares then they don't want to go out with you and that's fine then you move on you have to get comfortable with rejection because we all get rejected hassan look at hassan he's he's he is like all the time he he, he is he he looks like he's what personifies chad and like sexiness and he gets rejected look hassan's not my type and very you know and very I mean? famously like, i mean you know if you've been in here long enough you heard the cara de Levine story like there's just like a lot of there's a lot of instances like that where people just don't and we match and i think like oh this is perfect and, and then it doesn't there's nothing that comes out of that you know and it happens, it happens but, to everybody to yeah, everybody i wouldn't I I would chat for a little bit, you know, a couple days. If there's some, if there's some, just, you know, that don't ask them out right away. I mean, I, you know, I've been married for so long now. I've never even used Tinder, but uh, that shit didn't even exist when I was dating. Mm. We all just fucked each other in my friends' groups in college. You know what I mean? Everyone just had sex with each other. Just Quit bragging, dude. Like it's compatible. Uh, but just chat them up for a couple days you know if the conversation's still going just ask them out i wouldn't ask them out right away yeah no no but the Don't fact, shoot from that, the is the like fact a... that you're having matches on tinder is um is good there, really bro. good 
yeah, it's, it's apparently okay. It's just, um, yeah, it's a... May I suggest upgrading to Tinder Gold? I gotta try that. Probably. You should, I'm yeah. serious. Like, it, it gives you more super likes. Uh, you can expand your... I'm not even sponsored by Tinder. I just think it's great. If you're if you're on the if you're hitting the internet market, you know what I mean. I think it's I think it's great. I'm not. It's not an ad. I, well, what's I he gonna do? Date a Norwegian? God no, forbid. you never know, right? The the world is your oyster. Why would you limit yeah. yourself to Finland? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, well. Also, have you seen these devices where they just swipe like a hundred times a second? So you might want to get one of those as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I live, an auto swipe. The, yeah. There you go. The problem. One problem is that I actually live in a. Yeah, live so kind of kind of like uh, at such a backwards place that I have probably swiped on everyone. That's see, that's the uh, issue. That's another problem, man. Where you yeah. live, like I, I know so many people. Like my friend, he could not get laid in college. Um, we went to we we're, we're, we're from Oregon. We went to college in Oregon. He could not get laid, and he moved to Florida. And this guy every night, different girl every night. And I, I, don't, I think geographically where you're located has a lot to do with, you know, what happens. Yeah, yeah um, but there, but it's zero percent. I mean, you're in Finland, so like obviously it's a little different. But like, there is zero percent chance that you have like seen every eligible person that you could be interested in being in a relationship with in your in your proximity. It's yeah. like physically impossible, unless you're in Iceland, in which case they're all your cousins. So GG's on that. Yeah, but you have an app, app for that. So in Iceland, of course. Tonight. Yeah. This is true. There's literally an Wait, application. There's an app in Iceland to yes. determine whether you're f related or you not. You think this is a joke, but it's not a joke. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I want awesome. to kind of. I want to before before I I uh, probably uh, leave the room for another other chatters. I will probably I wanted to kind of go for that. Is it the because you uh, Ethan said that uh, it takes two days. You know, like try talk to them for a few days or something. Do you, do people go like, hey, wanna grab a coffee someday or something? Is it, is it really that only? Yes. Is it like, you don't elaborate yes. anything. It's yes, literally it's that literally, simple. It's literally like, yeah. hey, are, you know, do you want to go grab coffee sometime? Yeah. Would you want to grab coffee? I would recommend for a first date, which would be really nice, is like, hey, let's get a co go to a nice place where you can get a coffee, go take a walk through a park or something. And just see if you guys, uh, you know, connect in in, uh, in person. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you're really just trying to meet them and see if there's chemistry. Uh, you can take them for for a meal. You could take them for a coffee. But I like. I think women, or when you're trying to court someone, they like kind of a public setting. Yes. They like when it's not super committal, so it's like they don't feel trapped. So I think the coffee date is a perfect setting to meet someone i would second yeah. that you know yeah. I, I think with eating dates you know are a little bit more intimidating i feel like there's more pressure yeah. with eating dates where with coffee you can sit and sip it sip your drink and talk and there, it's more conversational than a than a dinner there's too much going on at a dinner i think first date ethan's correct coffee date yeah yeah it's a uh, i can i can see that and uh the it's just the uh, Usually I just get into my head so easily in that sense that uh, I kind of start questioning every move so hard that it kind of falls apart before I get to that point. So it's just hard to hard to be. You know what's fucked up is that. these red pills and these pickup artists, you know why they're successful is because God, there's there are people like you in the world who just are not confident socializing. These pickup artists, they, they go, we have the answers, right? We tell you what to do and how to say, and it's just a game. That's bullshit. There's no answer. The only answer really is for you to, there's, there's no easy solution here for you. I'm sorry to say, you just gotta, just gotta do it, you know? And if you're looking for like a partner, actually if you're looking for someone to you know build a life with those red pills uh those red pills is a bottomless pit of just pain and self-loathing and confusion yeah. just be genuine the thing is like be thoughtful listen be nice ask questions be engaged with them just be genuinely interested in who they are and um try not to talk too much about yourself i would say more listen to them and try to engage with them and be interested with them yeah people and, love to uh, hear themselves speak it's so, not necessarily a bad thing sometimes when you're nervous and you just want to feel like you're you're doing conversation but i think it's good to um 
let that person know that you're interested, that you're listening, that you're a nice person. And that's pretty much all you can do at the end yeah. of the day. All right. That's, um, yeah, I, I just think I need to try to run into a brick wall for <laughs> for the first few times just to get over it. But, uh, but, but yeah. you're not. You're probably not even going to run into a brick wall. I mean, yes, there will definitely be failures, uh, but that is how you learn and that's how you get better. And also... These things aren't as like these things aren't as by the book as uh, Ethan also called out like as red pill uh, Andy's try to fucking describe it. It might just not be good vibe. You might not actually fit well with that other person. So and, and, all you can do is keep take, trying. Don't take rejections personally either. You know what I mean? Don't get in your head about rejection. Don't start it. Don't go down that slippery slope of being like, oh, they don't. Oh, it must be something wrong with. No, there's nothing wrong with you. I, I would venture to say most interactions between people that are going down that romantic road don't work out that's what i would vent i would venture to say I, I can speak from personal experience most of the time that i if i were to engage in a discussion like that most of those haven't gone and or materialized into anything so you have to understand that you're not the only one in that and and it's not a you problem it's just the human condition yeah it's a for me it's just hard to be very laissez-faire about it in that sense and it's kind of it's very hard to when you're in that moment it's hard to you know realize that and, uh, do you uh, talk to a therapist about why you take rejection so hard because that's probably something to sort out with the therapist too it, well it's probably uh, very related to the adhd in that sense uh, it's uh, it has been very common for many people to have that problem about rejection being especially painful it's uh, uh, a lot of people talk about rejection and to dysphoria in that sense but uh, hmm. yeah I don't I don't want to waste your time anymore in that sense so you're well, just remember time. dude just remember you're gonna fucking die like pretty soon uh, uh, you know <laughs> in the universal scale so I yeah, mean none of this true. fucking <laughs> matters so some random girl rejecting you when you're on your deathbed you're not even gonna remember her yeah all not right, forget your deathbed in like you know three in, months in a you're week gonna you're gonna not remember that at all and well, the more you yeah, get rejected I, I, the more you get rejected the less it, important it's going to feel take those you know this is so cheesy but take those losses as a lesson and see the positive in that because you're like well bro, i'm learning i'm yeah, learning I'm and i'm developing thick skin hang on i got something for you the star beetle juice is 400 the size of 400 million suns have you heard of that star yeah yeah you know about beetlejuice beetle guys yes. it's yes. 400 million suns bro and you care about being rejected yeah. it's yeah. so it's big a, dude yeah it's uh but that's just i know it's cowardice but what our, our sun no, is going to explode bro in like six billion years our sun is going to explode and engulf the whole fucking galaxy dude <laughs> Your rejection uh, will be. Will I, be. I, Ethan, you're giving him an will, existential crisis on top I, I of. I think I will go get another drink here, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. But uh, before before I leave, I just wanted to say thank you for the mods. They were, they were absolutely great, and uh, how how they worked this this stuff around and uh, did it, did everything very very clearly. So, yeah. Uh, and, no, they're uh, great. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you all, and uh, have a good one. But you it's not this. cowardice. Don't forget, it's not cowardice. It is perfectly natural to feel the feelings that you feel. Stop saying it's cowardice, okay? I would go so far as to say it's simply inexperience, okay? That's it. And the best way to effectively combat that is by gaining experience. You know, exposure therapy. You got to fucking overcome it by doing it. And doing it with everyone. Just, like, talk to people. Force yourself to be more social. Even if it's a platonic conversation, you know what I mean? And oh, ultimately sure, you're yeah. just going to get better at talking to people. Thank yeah, you, my friend. Would... Thank yeah, you, Waffles. Care, Good luck. Thank you. Bye.